Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. So as you can see here in this tutorial, we'll be setting up a skill tree and you can just open and close it with a key press. So there, I just closed it and then I can open it again. And the way it works is it's broken down into columns. So you can see I have my agility abilities, my weapon abilities and my health abilities. And you can customize, the, customize these or change them or add many more if you want. Like it's totally customizable. These are just kind of example ones that I've chosen. And then you can see at the top here, you have points. So I just have it set up so when I press a key on my keyboard, it adds some points. So you can see I just added four points. But you can obviously make this, you know, based on, you know, when you level up or when you kill somebody or when you get a coin. That That's something that would give you a point. But for the sake of this tutorial, I just have it set up so you can just add points whenever you want. Um, but anyways, um, it uses these points for purchasing the abilities. So you can see the only ones that are unlocked are the ones at the top of the columns. So if I click on this double jump, you can see it unlocks double jump and then it also or it purchases double jump, so now I, I have that one, I own that one, um, but then it unlocks increased speed as something I can buy. And so you can see these ones down here at the bottom, I can't actually even purchase them yet because I first need to purchase the ones above them. So you can see I can kind of click around here and you can get an idea of what's going on. And then when I run out of points, uh, if I try to click on one, it doesn't, it doesn't actually work because I don't have any points to buy it with. And so this little red symbol means that it's you know, you can't purchase it yet because you need to first unlock something above it. The blue unlock one means that it's available to be purchased, but you don't own it yet. And the green check mark means that you already have it. And then one other thing I kind of want to point out before we go ahead and jump into this is I didn't actually go and like implement all of these because you can see here I have like faster health regeneration, an extra weapon slot, like increased weapon damage. And obviously this is just the first person template, so we don't even have that stuff to modify. So but some of these I have, so like double jump, I have that one set up. So if I close this, I can double jump after I purchase it. And let's say I purchased this increased speed. So I just went ahead and purchased that one. If I go ahead and close this, you can see I now move quicker. So the way the system's set up is it's set up in such a way that whenever you purchase one of these things, it basically tells your character or whoever owns the skill tree component that a specific ability was purchased and then it calls a function inside of blueprints and inside of that blueprint, you can do whatever you want. So it's it's pretty dynamic in the sense that you can create these abilities to do whatever you want. And I'll kind of be showing you all that uh, here once we get started. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm gonna be doing this totally from scratch. So I'm gonna open up the Epic Game Launcher and then I'm on version 4.26.0. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. Uh, if you can, I recommend being on this one or newer just to avoid any potential issues, but it should work in pretty much any version, I think. And then we're gonna select games down here and then hit next. And then I'm just using the first person template, so I'm gonna select that. And then we want blueprints, we don't need any starter content. I'm not gonna call this skill tree tutorial. And then go ahead and create the project. Give it a second to load. Okay. So let's see. So let's start with um, creating some of this folder structure that we're going to need. So let's right click and make a new folder and we will call this skill tree. So everything related to our skill tree is going to go inside of here. So let's open this guy up. Uh, the first thing we need is going to be our component, our skill tree components. So let's right click and select blueprint class and then select actor component. And we will call this skill tree component. So as you can see here, our skill tree is actually a component, which means we can add it to whatever we want. So we can add it to a player, we can add it to a vehicle, we can add it to a gun, or anything in your game that you wanna have a skill tree associated with it, you can just add this component to that thing. And then with just very few uh, minor changes to the code, you can have it work for a bunch of different things in your game, which is kinda cool. All right, um, the next thing we need is, well actually, let's just open this guy up and start working. So let's open him up. So over here on the left, um, one second. Yeah, over here on the left, we want to add a variable to keep track of all of the different skills inside of our skill tree. So let's create a variable and we will call this, um, I called it root in my other project and I called it that because it's kind of the root of the tree. You can maybe give it a different name, like it's really the skills, but I'm just gonna call it root. And then over here on the right, we wanna change the type of it to be string. And then we want to change this to be a map or a dictionary. 
And then for the second type here, what we really want it to be is we want it to be a array of um, objectives, or it's not objectives, an array of abilities, sorry. And so what this is going to be is it's basically a dictionary or a map that maps a string, which is the category like agility or damage or health or whatever, whatever categories you want to be inside of your skill tree, and it maps those to the actual skills. So we need two things here because as you can see here, let's say we select like an actor or an object over here, it doesn't matter what. If you select something over here, you can't actually create an array of these inside of a map. It's just a limitation of blueprints. And so in order to do that, we need to make a struct. And then inside of that struct, we need to add an array. All right, so let's go back and do that real quick. So back in the content folder, or back in our, um, oh, where did I make that folder? I put that in the wrong spot. Okay, I meant to put seal tree inside of the content folder. So if you hit this little button over here on the left, it, it kind of expands this left side. And we just want to take this skill tree folder and move it into the content folder so that it looks like this, because this is where I meant to put it. All right, so inside of here, we need two things. We need that structures, and then we also need the blueprint for our skills. So let's right click and make a new folder, and we will call this skills. And then inside of here, let's add a skill. So we're going to actually make this of type um, object. And the reason we're doing that as opposed to like an actor is because, well, your abilities or your skills don't actually have like a physical representation to them. So for that reason, they can just be objects. So we can say blueprint class. And then we hit this little drop down and we can select object right here. And then it's select. And we will call this BP underscore skill. And then one thing we can do, well, actually we'll come back to this later. So just leave that here for now and then go back up a folder and then back over here, let's right click again. And we want to make a structure to hold on to an array of these things. So we'll say, uh, I think it's under blueprints and then structure. And we will call this S underscore skill array. And so inside of here, we can open this up real quick. Uh, we just want to add an array of skills. So we can change this to be of type BP skill. And then we'll call this our skills. And then over here on the right, we can select array. And so now that we have this structure, which contains an array of skills, we can go back to our skill tree component and we can select root over here and we can change this type to be our skill array. And so what this is doing is it's creating a map where the key is the string, which is the category. And then the value is an array of all the different skills or abilities inside of that category. Okay. So that's gonna be where everything gets stored. And then the other thing we wanna keep track of inside of here is the number of points you have, because you might wanna have a different number of points um, for your, you know, like your guns might use different points than your character, for example. So the skill tree component needs to keep track of points. So add another variable and we will call this points, except for this one, we wanna change it to an integer and we wanna change this back to single variable like so. And then we can select this one and we can say private because we want it to be private. And we also want to do the same thing for this root. And I actually found something out recently. If you go up here to this I and you say show access specifier, it will show you that these are both private in the little category over here on the left. And it's a little bit nicer this way because I think it's kind of useful to be able to see this. I used to add a, I used to add them to a private category, but I kind of prefer this way. So. If you see private and public over here, it's just because I have this select, selected. But yeah, we want these both to be private. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is, I guess let's just start with the input. So let's make it so when you press a key, it pops up on the screen, well, at least something. So let's go to our edit and project settings and we will go to input. And we want to add an action mapping. So drop this down and then hit this little plus button. And we will call this um, toggle skill tree. And then over here uh, or below it, we can select the key that we want. If you're using 4.26, you can just hit this button and then hit the key on your keyboard. So I'm going to use like P. If you're not using 4.6 or 4.26, you're on an older version, you can just find the button in this drop down that you want it to be bound to. But I'm going to use P. 
And then we need to go to our character. So I'm just going to select my character right here and then say, or click this little edit button to edit the blueprint. And then what we want to do here is down here on the bottom, we can right click and say input action toggle skill tree. And so inside of here, what we want to do is we want to check if the skill tree is currently being shown. And if it is, then we want to hide it. And if it's not, then we want to show it because we we're toggling it. So we could like create and destroy the skill tree widget each time, but a slightly better way to do it is just to create it once like in begin play and then just toggle the visibility of it. So let's go up here to the top real quick to begin play. And we will say um, create widget, I can type, create widget. And so the widget we want to create, um, we haven't actually created the widget for it yet, so we need to go ahead and do that real quick. So actually, let's, let's back out and do that real quick. So let's go back here, and then let's make a new folder inside of the skill tree folder and call it widgets. And so inside of here, we want to add a widget, so right click and say user interface widget blueprint, and we will call this the skill tree underscore widget. And that's probably good enough for right now. Oh, actually, let's open this up real quick because we want to add something to it and then we'll come back. So let's open this up. So we want this skill tree widget to have access to our skill tree component. That way it can like read values from it. It can you know read all the categories and read all the abilities and it knows how to display them. So over here on the graph tab, let's just add a variable real quick. And we'll call it the... Um, skill tree component and we want to set it to private expose on spawn blueprint read only and instance editable and what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to when we spawn the widget to actually pass in that variable um, let me just check something real quick yeah so now back here in our first person character we can select our skill tree widget and you can see when we do that, oh, we left that out of the Boolean, oops. Go back to the skill tree widget. We wanna change this to be skill tree component reference. So make sure you change that to component reference and then compile save. And now we can come back here and we might need to refresh this. So I'm gonna right click and say refresh nodes. And so now it's asking us to pass in our skill tree component. So we can just drag our, oh, we haven't added it yet, oops. So up here at the top, let's just add a skill tree component. And there we go. And then we can just take this, drag it in, and hook it up there. And then for the owning player, uh, we can say get controller. And then we can cast to a player controller since we know it's going to be a player controller. And then I'm also going to right click and convert this to a pure cast just because we know it's going to succeed. And there we go. So now we're creating our widget. And then we also want to right click on this and promote it to a variable. And we will call it. Um, this is the skill tree widget, and we can just go ahead and make this private. And there we go. And I don't think to the right, I don't think we really need any of this stuff. This is all just VR stuff, so I'm just going to delete it. The stuff that was inside of the begin play, and we'll just put this here. Okay, so you can see we're not actually adding this to the viewport yet, and that's because we don't want it to be in the viewport by default. We only want it to show up when the player presses the button. So let's come back down here to where we kind of left off. So we have this toggle skill tree. And so now we just want to check if it's currently on the screen. So if we drag in our skill tree widget, we can say is in the viewport. And then we can drag off of this into a branch. And so if it is currently in the viewport, then we want to remove it. So let's drag it in again. And I'll say remove from parent. And hook that up to true. Um, but if it's not in the viewport, then we want to add it. So we'll drag it in. Say add to viewport. And then also, uh, when we add it to the viewport, we also want to set the input mode to be game and UI. That, that way we can actually make use of the mouse. And we also want to show the mouse cursor. So to do that, we need to get access to the player controller. So I'm just going to come back up here and copy these two nodes where we get access to the player controller. And then we'll come back down here and just paste. 
And so if you drag off of the player controller, you can say set input mode game and UI. The widget to focus is going to be our skill tree widget. So we can drag in our skill tree widget, hook that up. Um, you probably also want to uncheck this because we don't want to hide the mouse cursor when we click. And then we also want to tell it to show the mouse cursor. So we can drag off of this again and say show mouse cursor. And we want to set this to true. And we we'll hook that up. And I'm just going to double click on the line here to create a reroute node, just kind of clean it up. And there we go. Uh, and then, oh, the one thing we need to do as well, so just like we do, just like we um, enable or we show the mouse cursor and we set the game mode to game and UI, whenever we add it to the viewport, we kind of want to do the opposite whenever we remove it. So when we're removing it from the viewport, we want to set the game mode to game only. So let's just copy these guys again, paste, and we'll say set game mode or set input mode game only. And then we want to do this again. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Except this time, make sure you uncheck this. So we want the say show mouse cursor is false, like so. Now, currently, this will probably work, but um, the widget doesn't actually have anything in it. So we won't be able to tell if it's working. So we can just come back to our skill tree widget real quick and go to the designer tab. And then I'm just going to add like a button or something to the canvas panel just so we can see if it's working real quick. So if we compile and save and press play. So when I press P, you can see my button shows up at the top left and you should have access to the mouse as well. So you can go up and click it if you want. And then when you press P again, it goes away and the mouse goes away as well. All right. So that seems to be working. Um, I guess we'll just continue in part two since we got to a good stopping place. So I'll see you guys in part two.